Yo, what is up, YouTube? Lee the Captain here. And I believe that the native cryptocurrency of Kusama called KSM is insane. And why do I say this? Because I believe that KSM during the next bull run could hypothetically at least go to the price of $1,000 and during the process make all of those Kusama critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and start begging for that used bratwurst extender. And of course, that's neither baby mama, grandma, nor financial advice. But in today's video, I want to explain several reasons why I believe KSM could hypothetically at least go to the price of $1,000 during the next bull run. And a major reason why I think that could happen, I think is going to boil down to the rock solid, that's what she said, fundamentals of Kusama. Because when we take a look at Kusama, what is it, right? Kusama is quite essentially a canary network to Polkadot. And what that means right there is that Kusama is almost an identical, but a more experimental version of Polkadot. Projects that wish to launch on Polkadot will typically first launch on Kusama first as a way to test out the project under real economic conditions. And now, when I say this, some people, they may be wondering, what is Polkadot focused on? And what Polkadot is focused on is interoperability. Quite essentially, they're focused on connecting blockchains together. And the reason why this is especially important, in my opinion, because a lot of blockchains out there, a lot of networks, you know, they're independent of one another. And as a result, they're not able to freely send value and data to each other. However, through Polkadot, this issue is quite essentially gone. For instance, if we take a look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, you know, they're two independent networks. And as a result, they're not able to freely send data and value to one another. But again, right through Polkadot, this issue is completely eradicated. It's just gone, much like a Baker Mayfield. I'm just joking. However, with that being said, I think it's fair to assume that Polkadot is extremely revolutionary and its canary network, Kusama, plays a very important role in my opinion. The way I view it is that Kusama, in a sense, is helping facilitate an amazing project like Polkadot. And now when I say this, some people, or should I say those Kusama critics slash ding-dongs, or should I say haters, they may be saying, and they may be pulling out their pom-poms and they may be yelling and saying, oh wow, you know, Kusama, it's just a test net. But I completely disagree because as a matter of fact, Kusama exists as its very own independent cryptocurrency. When compared to Polkadot, it's far easier to make changes on Kusama and it's also cheaper to rent building space on Kusama as well. And this right here makes it more convenient for smaller projects and startups to start building on Kusama. So with that being said, I think it's fair to assume that Kusama plays a very important role and it's very revolutionary in my opinion. And while some people may view Polkadot as the big brother, so to speak, I don't think that's such a bad thing because when you think about it, for every Batman, there's a Robin. Polkadot, the way I view it, it's like Batman. Kusama, it's like Robin. They both play their own role, so to speak. They're not gonna be able to beat the Dr. Freeze guy that Arnold Schwarzenegger played if they're not collaborating, if you get my drift. However, I now want to shift gears real quick and talk about something that I find very special because here's a very crazy statistic for you. And no, I'm not talking about Britney Spears at all. Because if we take a look at this, Kusama and Polkadot, as of August, was ranked number one in the world in terms of crypto development activity and beating out giants such as Hedera, Chainlink, Cardano, Cosmos, and many others. I mean, that's impressive. I think that, if anything, truly showcases the conviction that people still have for Kusama and Polkadot. I mean, being ranked number one in the world in terms of crypto development activity. I mean, man, that's crazy in my opinion. A lot of people believe in its future. At least that's the way I view it. And so do I. Because why would I not believe in its future? If we take a look at Kusama as of right now, there's already amazing projects on its ecosystem, such as Moon River, Bifrost Finance, Darwinia Crab, Sakura, and many others. I mean, it's very amazing in my opinion. You know, a lot of projects out there, they really struggle to get any sort of good projects to get built on their ecosystem. But that's completely not the case when it comes to Kusama. It's very special. However, it doesn't end there because I think that it should be noted how currently on Kusama, there is around 300,000 holders and it even has been able to facilitate nearly 10 million transfers so far which I find very impressive and fantastic, if you get what I mean, fantastic. And now for the people out there that say that, oh, you know, the best days are behind Kusama. I disagree because 
when we take a look at this right here, we will see that by 2030, the global blockchain technology market is expected to be worth over $1.4 trillion. I mean, man, that's crazy. That's insane. And I think that moving forward, as the blockchain technology market continues to grow, I think so will amazing projects, much like Polkadot, and as well as Kusama. I think when Polkadot continues to grow, I think so will Kusama. You know, when Batman's doing his thing, so is Robin. And a major catalyst, in my opinion, which could very well allow KSM, the native cryptocurrency of Kusama, to hypothetically attain the price of $1,000 during the next bull run, is the fact that I do think that the next bull run could be so legendary. And why do I say this? Because as of right now, there's actually more people than ever before in history owning cryptos. And that's not a joke. Because when compared to the 2021 bull run, at that time, there was actually over 100 million less crypto owners than today. So you gotta let that sink in, right? That 2021 bull run, that was no joke. But yet again, still even despite that, there was over 100 million less crypto owners at that time than today. So you gotta imagine what the next bull run will look like especially when we have this many people. I mean, when you insert over 100 million new crypto owners, I mean, carayo, during the next bull run, the amount of FOMO, buying pressure, buying volume, and as well as the altcoin season, I think all of that could be so ridiculous. Hashtag Snooki from Jersey Shore. I'm just joking. But, well, maybe not really. But yeah, besides that point, I think the next bull run could be something to behold, and I think that it could really dwarf the 2021 bull run. And I think that when altcoins start rallying during the next bull run, I think so will amazing cryptocurrencies, much like KSM. And when I take all of those positive factors into consideration, and when I consider the incredible A-plus fundamentals of Kusama, I don't see why KSM during the next bull run won't hypothetically at least go to the price of $1,000. At least that's the way I view it. And now, of course, that's all financial advice. But personally for me, I am constantly dollar cost averaging into KSM. And what do I mean by this? I am accumulating on a consistent basis, on a set schedule, over an extended period of time. So anytime I earn any sort of income, I set aside a certain percentage for KSM. And it doesn't matter if that day, if the price of KSM is pumping or dumping, it doesn't matter. I just accumulate anyways, because I'm taking more of a long-term approach. Again, right? Anytime I earn any sort of income, boom, I set aside some for KSM. And by doing so, I'm quite essentially putting those horse blinders on, and I'm just focused on time in the market as opposed to timing the market, if that makes sense. Because a lot of people out there, they want to time the market. And they do this by day trading, swing trading, using leverage. But personally for me, I don't bother with any of that type of nonsense. Because I think that type of stuff is complete craziness. Because a lot of friends that I know that day trade or swing trade or use leverage... A lot of them absolutely get cooked. They end up becoming guacamole on that Chipotle bowl. And I don't want to be that, you know. I want to keep it simple. I just want a dollar cost average. By dollar cost averaging, I think that I'm protecting myself from a lot of risk. Because if let's say I'm dollar cost averaging, right? I'm just accumulating, accumulating. And let's say my portfolio is down 10%. Let's say 20%. Okay, that may not be good for some people's ego. But let's say the price of KSM pumps 30% then what happens? I've recouped my loss, right? But through day trading, if someone's using leverage, once, let's say, they short KSM, but then instead the price goes up, they get liquidated, they get stop loss, they're quite essentially done from that position. There's no coming back from that. They have to make a new trade that hopefully recovers the previous losses. But what happens if they lose the next trade and they lose the next one and the next one, like what happened to my friend? They could end up spiraling. They could end up getting stressed out. And that right there, in my opinion, could be a recipe for a disaster. And that's why I don't do that. I like to keep it simple. I just dollar cost average. And by dollar cost averaging into KSM, I think that I'm preparing myself for the next bull run in such a fantastic way. I wouldn't be surprised whatsoever if KSM during the next bull run did hypothetically at least go to the price of $1,000 and during the process make all of those Kusama critics come running over to their girlfriend's boyfriend's grandma and start begging for that used Broadworth extender, Taylor Swift edition. If you know, you know. And when it comes to Taylor Swift, why is she dating Travis Kelsey? The relationship is not going to last long, in my opinion. But yeah, besides that point, I'm extremely bullish on the future of KSM. I think it's a sleeping giant. That's what she said. And if you want to check out a very interesting video, make sure to go ahead and click on this thumbnail right here. It's a very fantastic video, and I think you all would really love it.
It's been Lee the Captain, and I'll catch y'all on the next one. I'm out. Peace. Bye.